from a lot of people, I think they struggle with, you know, just not knowing who they are and how powerful they are. But I will tell anybody who's out there who doubts wholesaling, if I could do it, I got a 990 on my SAT. I barely graduated high school, and I mean barely. And then I immediately got kicked out of college, so um, at which I barely got into college. So yeah. I will tell you, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It is so <laughs> simple. It's ridiculous. What's up, y'all? Coming at you with a crazy special episode. And uh, you're going to know why you're here in a second. So this is back in 2000, man, 2016, I think it was July or August. Uh, the previous quarter, I'd done an energy audit. And an energy audit, if you guys haven't heard of my energy audit yet, it changed my life. Go to carrot.com forward slash energy, carrot.com forward slash energy. And in that energy audit was stop writing as much long form content and start to do a podcast because I really get energy from these types of conversations with, with amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, one of which is, I'm going to reintroduce or reintroduce you to here in a second. I started to put together the carrot cast and I didn't know what the podcast is going to be about. I knew I wanted to inspire people. I knew I wanted to drop amazing real estate knowledge on people with great guests that come in. And I, I knew that I wanted to talk about mindset, marketing, content, marketing, building authority, but bring experts in who are the people closing deals. And the very first person I thought of to kick off the, the podcast with great energy, but also been an amazing partner of ours um, over the years, you know, we work with a lot of their clients and they work with a lot of ours. Uh, is Mr. Tom Kroll. And I'll, I'll introduce you guys to Tom here in a second. But uh, Tom and I bumped into each other at a real estate event years ago, I think Ken Clothier's event. We're yes. sitting next to each other, ate some dinner. And from then on, uh, I just kept on hearing so many amazing things that people were saying about Tom that had a chance to work with him and his company uh, to learn how to do wholesaling and do their first deals or scale up to do a lot more. So uh, welcome back to the Carrot Cast, Tom. You are our very first Carrot Cast uh, guest and now what is this almost 200 now so welcome back bam i'm oh, so <laughs> excited to be here i can't believe i was the first guest darren told me that before we started trevor it's a yeah. great honor to be here and thank you for your friendship and what you do for our industry it's amazing and uh everything you do helps our business because mm. we use you in our personal wholesaling business so thank you for karen it's, it's a great service we love it dude li likewise it's kind of funny so you sent i don't remember when it was after after we had first met but we got a box in the mail and i got a victory bell because oh here's what it was after the podcast during the podcast dude you went back and rang the victory bell during the podcast uh, you you okay. went back and you went back and rang the victory bell during the podcast and I asked what it was and then I got a victory bell in the mail so we've had ours up in the, in the offices back here for however many years that's been and here's, uh, the, here's the original victory bell there it is man <laughs> <laughs> I love it that is love the it. original victory bell on my wall still there it's a new office but that's the it's, it's a new home office we just yeah. relocated the office but yeah that's we were ringing that thing all day I love it there's nothing like wholesaling it's the greatest business in, in the whole world so we're we're always ringing that victory bell dude I love it and thank you let's let's do this kind of reverse back for those who did not listen to the first episode if you didn't listen to the first episode first of all right after this go back and listen to that one because there's a bunch that Tom goes into in that episode on how to get your first deal on how to really go out there and market but that was three years ago y'all there's a, there's there's a lot of things that that have adjusted in the market there's a lot of things that have changed in the past three years so I'm wanting to let people know who you are what do you do um, how did you get into wholesaling the quick version of it? They can go to the long version over in the first episode. And then we'll kind of dive into what's working now in this market three years after our first episode with you. Yeah, let's do it. We'll get, we'll cut right through all the fat and uh, mm -hmm. I'll just tell you my story is quick. It's every, like everybody else. I was, I hit rock bottom. I was fired. I was broke. I was bankrupt, all that good stuff. I was 33 years old. I'm 40 now. I can't believe all this time that went by. <laughs> Time goes by fast when you're having fun. And yeah. uh, I, I called my brother. He said, you know, I said, hey, this is what happened. I lost my job. I'm, I had no money. And he said, stop being such a blankety, blankety, blank and just get into wholesaling already. I was scared. Trevor, because he lives in San Diego, Todd Toback, he's my, my stepbrother. I was scared because a lot of the people, you know, I, I was thinking San Diego is so much bigger. Houses are so much more expensive. 
there's so many houses. I live in a tiny, small town in, in Florida. Anyway, he just told me what to do. It was Mr. Miyagi Daniel, uh, Danielson style. He told me what to do. Anytime I asked him a question, he would hang up on me. He's like, don't ask any questions, right? Just do what I tell you. And it was a great adventure. He dragged me kicking and screaming the whole way. I had amazing success with it. I can't, like wholesaling to me is just, I remember my first deal, Dorothy on Bayshore, amazing deal, $2,000. And I made every mistake in the book last year. So to fast forward last year in 2018, uh, we did over a million dollars in assignments. It's incredible. That's with one and a half people, (laughs) right? One and a half people. It's me and Dan and and, uh, Lorraine. I don't really do much in the business, but um, Daniel's the AM and, and Lorena kind of works half time in that business. A lot of people who know wholesaling equal know Lorena. She was our first hire in the business, mm. still with us today. And it's an, it's amazing. I mean, wholesaling is so easy. And for anyone who doesn't know wholesaling, it's essentially a pawn shop. It has nothing to do with real estate at all. Zero zilch, nothing. That's the mm. number one lesson I've learned. It's a pawn shop. If it, 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 you are finding a discounted property and selling it as quickly as possible, if cars or jewelry or television sets were more valuable and more desirable tomorrow, then we would just switch our model over to cars and jewelry or whatever it is tomorrow because I have no interest in real estate, really. So it's uh, it's a great business. I love it. And it's uh, a lot of changes from when we started. So I'm, I'm anxious to jump in and we can yep. get started with that. But yeah, it's it's wholesaling is really uh, is amazing. I, I, I love it. I love it. Dude, and, and that's that's a really good distinction you made too, because a lot of people kind of get they have the fear when they're going into wholesaling because the big dollar amounts of the houses, right? It could be a even if it's a forty thousand dollar house, that might be a big dollar amount for people. But what, with, with wholesaling, like you said, it really doesn't have anything to do with buying the property, so you're not even buying that thing anyway. Uh, where, where where do you see? Because you work with a ton of new wholesalers, where, where do you see their biggest fears creeping up that they've got to get over uh, early on? Yeah, well, I think that first of all, a lot of people have a lot of, you know, when you get into real estate, or or at least when I did, there are all of these terms and acronyms and jargon, you know, people talk about cap rate, and ARV and equity and all of this. The, The bottom line with wholesaling is wholesaling is the art of consistently finding discounted properties. And that is it. Mm-hmm. If, if if you can get good at finding discounted properties consistently in your neighborhood, you will become very, very, very wealthy in a very short amount of time. Um, so I think what, where the confusion comes in, where a lot of people get nervous or scared or they have anxiety is, is they tend to overcomplicate it because so many people go right into the real estate end of it. Mm. And um, I think that's where a lot of the fear comes from. A lot of people, I think they struggle with, you know, just not knowing who they are and how powerful they are. But I will tell anybody who's out there who doubts wholesaling, if I could do it, I got a 990 MSAT, I barely graduated high school, and I mean barely. And then I immediately got kicked out of college, So, um, and which I barely got into college. So I will tell you, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It is so <laughs> simple. It's ridiculous. So, um, and as far as the exit strategy, you know, don't worry about it. Follow whoever you're learning, you know, whether in your local market or however you're learning how to wholesale, just follow, just, I think the best advice I got was when, when a mentor gives you, tells you to do something, what happens is you don't put their instruction through the filter of your own opinion. Mm. You just do it. Mm. And, yep. you know, so when you're in a room with like Tony Robbins and he tells you to do something, you just do it. It's because you've submitted to that person. So for me, I had Todd. I knew he was a millionaire. I, I knew he had my best interest at heart. I knew I could trust him. And he let me, I, you know, I knew I could believe in myself because he taught me how to do that. Mm. And then I just stopped trying to pick and choose or cherry pick the information. I just did everything he said to do, even if I didn't understand it 100% or why I was doing it. Yep. And I think that a lot of new people, they struggle with that because it's hard to, you know, who do you trust? And, yep. you know, we all of that good stuff. So I think that that's, that's one of the keys. <laughs> And, and and they'll they'll see they'll see the thread on you know on on Facebook or they'll they'll hear another podcast or something like that and they'll 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 see other other advice being put out there in those Facebook threads or on podcasts or on random YouTube videos and 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 they'll start to second guess themselves right or they'll start to second guess the system and that's one of the biggest things I can I can pass along to people is we're going to dive into exactly what's working what worked last year for Tom to bring in over a million bucks in wholesaling fees but also the market is different this year than it was last year in most spots what's working now uh, for them we're going to dive into the details on that but one of the biggies y'all that I've found is there's a million ways to do a lot of different things 
Um, and it's not that one only there's only one method. You just have to pick a method. You have to pick someone to follow and implement their method that you know is proven to work and then go all in on it. And if you start to dabble in a bunch of different stuff, that's where you get in trouble. If you, if you hire a coach, but don't listen to them and you go do this thing you learn on, on YouTube or you hire a coach and you, you go to a mastermind and they tell you this other thing and you do something different. Um, that's probably where we're going to be tripping up. So I love it, dude. Tom, I, w- I want to ask you a personal question, actually, before we dive into the real estate side. The, uh, the last mastermind that, that we did, that uh, uh, you weren't able to make it to that one in person, but you were there digitally. Uh, w- one thing on it, so you, Tom was beaming in from his cabin, I think it was like up in Tennessee or wherever. Everybody there, there's only a couple of people that had met you before. And I was sitting next to my buddy, um, Aaron, who's just a big investor, uh, you know, amazing guy. And I think uh, Ryan Fletcher was there too, just one of the smartest marketers I know. And they're like, man, I absolutely love this guy's energy. They're like, it's, infe- <laughs> it's, it's infectious even through the airwaves. So I want to well, yeah. ask you a question, man. So ha- have, have you always been that way? Is that something that's recently shifted because of the mindset shifts you had to make in this process of going from where you were to figuring out who you needed to become to be successful? Have you always been that way? Or are you an, uh, an amplified version because of mindset shifts? 100%. It was a total shift at 33. Mm-hmm. Um, before I was 33 years old, I was failing at almost every area of my life. I was just a disaster. I, I, I had the wrong circle of people around me. Jim Rohn says about the five people, you know, I, I, I mean, just to be blunt, mm-hmm. trying not to be influenced by people that you spend time with is like me telling you to go swimming and not get wet. Yeah. It is impossible. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't, I guess I just adopted their negative, you know, latest emergency, constant anxiety about the past and the future, mm-hmm. uh, doubting myself, not really knowing who I am, that I'm, I'm strong and powerful and I'm made in the image of God. And I, you know, yep. if I put my mind to something, I could do it. And I will tell you that um, if you would have met me when I was 32 or before that, uh, you would have not recognized me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in tons of debt. I was spending uh, money to uh, my cars when I was broke were nicer than my cars now that I'm wealthy, thank God. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I think that, um, you know, why am I so excited? Because I know that wholesaling works. I I cannot explain to you the enthusiasm um, that I have for it because it is so incredible to be, like today I got a check, it's in my kitchen, but it was for three thousand dollars, right? And you know, you're like, well, what's three thousand dollars, right? That's nothing, and I pay Daniel twenty percent of that. Plus, there's some marketing expenses, but yep. you know, it's it, there's nothing difficult about wholesaling. It's mm. a numbers game. It, you know, we always say, be a deal finder, not a deal creator. This has nothing to do with your skill level. This has to do with persistence, grit, determination. You know, waking up early. How bad do you want it? Mm. Talk to four hundred people. They're all going to tell you no. When you talk to the 401st person, they're going to say, yeah, you know, I'll take, if you can do do this quickly and conveniently, I'll give you a, a discounted price for my house. Yep. And that's Dude. it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Dude, I, I, I love it. And, and I want to acknowledge that. And we're going to dive into the real estate part of this now. But I, I, I did want to ask that because because one thing that, that will creep up, and I have people ask me this too, or, or they'll say this to me, they'll go, well, shoot, Trevor. Uh, of course, you're, you're telling us to do more video and do more content and things like that. But you're good at you're you're good at video and da da da. It's like man, that, that's I, guys. I used to hide behind a computer. I, I used to I used to not do any video. I, I used to like be embarrassed to put my face and my voice on stuff because I didn't want to hear to see it. And, <laughs> and I think when 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 everyone sees Tom's enthusiasm, they're going, well, of course that guy can be successful. Like look at who he was born as. Like this, you yeah, know, this, no. this guys. And I'm like, and I didn't know what your answer was going to be there. I was honestly curious. If you were like that your whole life, I'm like, sweet, man, that's amazing. You, you hit the gene lottery. That's great. Or, or you grew up in a great environment. But the shift yeah, is not, important because if someone- Not at all. Yeah, yeah, f- five jobs before wholesaling, I was yeah. fired from every single one of them. Most of them were in sales. And mm-hmm. I, was, I never kept a job. Every single job I've ever had, I've been fired from. It's crazy. I I, I love it, guys. Go back and listen to the episode that I talk about. Uh, I think I call it the 1% journey. And I talk about uh, talking there about writing down the person that you need to become in order to, you know, there's a person that you're currently are being, and then there's a person that you need to become or want to become. If you see a lot of, uh, of what you want to become in Tom or in me or in someone else, 
write those things down. You can shift your life. You can shift your mindset uh, towards that in a big way. So guys do that. All right, now let's jump over to the real estate side. So uh, one thing that you talked about uh, early on, Tom, was you said uh, we're in the marketing business or deal finding business, not the real estate business or not the house business, right? And I think that's right. critical because one, one really cool thing that you mentioned earlier, and some people might have taken them off guard a little bit, is, is you're like, man, I don't even like real estate. Um, if, if it switched over to jewelry or this other thing, we would then switch over to that. Because a lot of people have the real estate part as the sacred part. Oh my gosh, I'm this real estate investor, this, this thing that's like this really cool item. And at the end of the day, if you're a wholesaler, you're not really investing in real estate. You're just, you're a marketer, like Tom said, that's finding the, the, your deal finder, and then you match it up. And the, the important skill there is the marketing side. And, and if that's one, one big belief that I've got is if you learn how to do marketing really well, which we're going to dive in how Tom's doing marketing to build the business that he has and how his students are doing as well. But if you learn how to be a great marketer, you can switch your business model like that to go after the opportunity. But if you're so baked into real estate and your business model doesn't apply anymore, then that's where you struggle. That's where you can't pivot. So Right. What's your thought on that, Tom? Yeah, I mean, it's so key. I mean, it's so funny. You know, people get started in this business and they're so enthusiastic about real estate. And you say, you know, I'll go into a seminar, right? And they'll say, I'll say, how many people love real estate? Everybody's hand goes up. Yeah. It's like, do you really love real estate? Because I happen to know people who are worth $100 million, $600 million. I mean, these are people that I have on my cell phone that would 33, I, if I would have been mowing their lawn, I would have been impressed, right? And now I'm like literally friends with these people, right? Yep. And I could tell you, None of them, you know, sp you know, when you love something, it means, hey, I spend time away from my friends and family to don't do this hobby, right? Mm -hmm. None of them are in real estate, right? They're not like, I want to, you know, they, they like to travel and mm -hmm. taste uh, exotic cuisine and walk on the beach or walk in the woods or take their sailboat or their yacht out or um, spend time with their friends and family. They're not like, hey, I love real estate. I'm going to go rehab house. Now, occasionally you get, come across a Bob Vila type, right? Who yep. just really loves craftsmanship. But um you know, this, I, I just think that this whole idea of making it about the real estate is such a, is, is such an important pivot in the beginning because mm. again, it has nothing to do with it. So I just, I just think that, um, and once you start to get, you know, I'm being a little facetious because I do put some of my money in uh, real estate. So I do like the, as, uh, from a portfolio, uh, a performance portfolio, I do like rentals. I, mm -hmm. I don't think that you can ignore rentals. You know, this whole idea of passive income with rentals. Um, rentals are not passive income. Yep. Anything you ignore will deteriorate and rot. And if you think that your rental portfolio is passive, let me know the address of your property because I'll send you a <laughs> postcard, a motivated seller postcard in about five years. That's um, right. you know, so so I, I mean, where do we get our deals from? We get them from landlords who thought that rental income was passive, right? It's not yeah. passive. But from an investment vehicle, I do like real estate. I have money in the stock market. Yeah. I have money in physical gold. I have money in the real estate market. So I like it, but um, I have no, you know, passion about, you know, going to a house and, you know, rehabbing it or, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. I especially can literally, I have a guy who comes to change the light bulbs. So <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. <laughs> so I think that, um, yeah, I think that making that pivotal shift in the beginning uh, is so key and it can set you free from going down the wrong road, mm. um, you know, of like trying uh, to determine the ARV, uh, which, you know, some people say it's um, after repair value. I think it stands for assumptions reduce victories. But <laughs> the other thing is, to, in order to determine ARV, you need to know the cost of repairing a property, which is like crazy. And here's the funniest thing about wholesaling. Nobody even cares what you think the ARV is. If, if you think a real cash buyer who is a real investor is going to make a decision based on what a brand new wholesaler says the ARV of a property is, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Right? I mean, so I just think changing like your mindset and just like being like, well, wait a second, this is not, a, you know, I don't know the value of a home. Okay. Is that really true? Cause there's a website called Zillow that'll tell you the, approximately the value. Mm. Um, just get a property for, you know, 40% less than that, mm. you know, whatever. I mean, you know, throw a dart on the board. I mean, that's kind of my, that's the way that we look at it. Cool. I, I do. I love it. So what, what's, what's working right now for you guys market? I know, I know you've been a carrot member for shoot, two, three years. Um, you made that switch from a yeah. landing page builder. You're, you're having success there, but your primary thing is not online. You guys, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your website right now. I was actually logged in there a little bit ago and you guys get a lot of leads and we might, we might dive into that, but what's your yes. primary? Like if you were to go into a new market right now, 
knowing what you guys know. And that's the beautiful thing, y'all, is I talked to a guy yesterday uh, down in Houston who he's like, his, his primary thing is cold calling and, uh, and uh, texting right now, right? And yeah. And I talked to Todd Swaggerty, who's up here, who owns Yellow Letters HQ. He's like, dude, direct mail is so working amazing right now. While well, everyone else, a lot of other people are saying it's not. And on our side, our jam is online. They all work, but you need to go all in on what's great for you. What do you guys do right now? If you're going into a new yeah. market, what are you guys doing? So let I can give you guys. So whoever is listening to this, who's going to wholesaling, I can tell you one thing for sure. Whatever channel you think is the best is the best, mm -hmm. right? But the number one mistake that new wholesalers make is they dip their toe in yep. like five different channels. So if you go to a RIA meeting and you talk to someone who's struggling and they do a deal and then they don't do a deal and they do a deal, those people you say, how are you finding your motivated sellers? They're going to say, well, I sent out a few handwritten letters. I put up a few bandit signs. I did some door knocking. I cold called some agents and I also sent out some X, Y, and Z. And I did yep. some you know, PPC and I made a website. If you talk to a wholesaler who's making consistently every single month $50,000 or more per month and you say, what do you do? Hmm. He or she is always going to have the same answer. I pick this one channel. I yep. love it for this reason. I've totally dominated it in my market. I know all the KPIs around it. I know exactly when to send it and how to send it and what color and what size. And So I think that the number one answer to the question of which channel are we doing is pick one channel yep. because a surefire way to delight, dilute your efforts and kill a channel is to kind of just tiptoe around all of them. For us, we love direct mail. I love direct mail. I especially love direct mail right now when everyone's like, direct mail is dead. I'm like, <laughs> great, whatever. I'm like, okay, if you say so. So we love direct mail. It's What I love about direct mail is that whenever you pick a channel, if you just haphazardly come into it and just you know don't really pay attention to it, every channel is weak. Mm -hmm. um, but I love direct mail because I can get 1% better every single campaign mm. and that's all i need to do i all i need to do in my life is i don't i don't need to compare myself to you know joe and sally and bobby all i have to do is compare myself to where i was yesterday mm. and with direct mail the kpis are so simple i can test colors sizes fonts message envelope postcard whatever it is and all of the lists that we use that we'll deep dive here in a minute um, and I can test them and I just have to get 1% better every day. Mm. So has direct mail uh, changed a little bit? Absolutely. It's changing all the time, right? But I'm more excited about it than ever because I know when the direct mail tree gets shaken and everybody else falls out, um, my numbers and my KPIs are so good that I, I'm doubling down. As a matter of fact, today, as we speak, I just ordered, uh, I usually send out about 5,000 pieces a week. I just today, this morning, ordered uh, 7,000 additional pieces per week for the next three weeks on a new test that we're doing. So I love it. And I love it because the most important reason I love direct mail is because I can reverse engineer it. Mm. So if I want to buy that cabin by the Appalachian Trail and it's X amount of dollars, I just have to, I know exactly my average deal is $18,400. I know exactly how many, how many visits it takes to get a deal. I know how many phone calls it takes to get a visit. I know how much mail it takes to get a phone call. Mm. So I just reverse engineer the whole thing. And, it, and it's a little more complicated than that, right? Because there's a tipping point. You can't yeah. mail too much. Otherwise, if you give an acquisition manager too many leads, it's actually worse than giving them not enough leads, right? So there's mm. little things like that. But I love direct mail because it's simple. It's easy. It's trackable. Um, and I will say I love Carrot because what I love about Carrot is that when a deal comes in from the website, it's smoking hot. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we love the website leads because um, they have such a high conversion ratio. Mm. Um, so it doesn't produce as many phone calls for me, but that's kind of a good thing because it doesn't tie up the AM. And when the deals come in, uh, we're like, get on those leads. Any internet yeah. leads are, you know, they're looking for us. They're, they're hot and we got to get to them. I will tell you what we found with internet leads is it's all about uh, speed. Mm -hmm. You got to get to them quick because if you don't get to them quick, they go right to somebody else. <laughs> yep. And so at, at ebb and flow marketing is critical. Outbound marketing, you're going to get the majority, you're going to get a higher volume of leads like Tom said, outbound marketing, because you're going to be basically uh, tapping someone's shoulder that may or may not be actually looking for the solution right now. They may be, but you're probably activating a lot of people who they have the pain, but they may not be looking yet. Right? right? You're right. activating them. And that's because you're able to activate a lot more people. The inbound side, the online side, it can really build momentum 
but it's going to be a lower volume because that's just the people that are towards the end, the further down the cycle. They're, they're activated and they're looking now. Um, and then they're really motivated. Like Tom was saying, that's why when you get those leads in, have the, have our system text you the darn, the darn lead, tap oh, yeah. the phone number and then call it immediately. Don't wait five, five minutes or 10. So that's like cool because like Tom was saying, pick your marketing method. Um, if you're going to go all in a direct mail, do it and then master that, that method. So it's so down, like you said, that, that Tom's got his numbers. They didn't add carrot on until that you guys were doing like hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, way before you ever added carrot on the online side. Yeah, I mean, it's, and what happens is what you find is that instead of becoming now a distraction, when you have a channel that is producing a consistent result that you can delegate the process to somebody else, mm -hmm. now when we bring in carrot um, as another channel, it is now it's supporting it, so it becomes yep. like additional legs to a stool. So I, I think it's so key that if you're really if you're just starting and you're broke and you don't know where to start pick one channel. It doesn't matter which one, whichever one you think is the best is the best and then make it work. Don't, you know, don't try. You got to treat it as though, um, you know, it's a silly analogy we always use, but the bottom line is if, if somebody you loved was kidnapped and the ransom was to find a discounted property, so mm. one homeowner out of a thousand, even that would just, and the numbers are better than that. But yep. you, the bottom line is you'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning, you'd skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you, you work until 11 until you were exhausted. You'd sell your television. I, when I started, I sold my golf cart to get mm. money for marketing. Um, I think that when you really decide, like, I'm going to like, you know, Tony Robbins says a decision is made in an instant. As soon as you do that, and you really commit, I mean, you could do everything that I teach and you could fail. There's no guarantees, but I could tell you yep. your best chance of, of succeeding is going all in. I, I love it. Let, let's take it into the, into the direct mail stuff a little bit more. So yeah. let's say they're going to go all in a direct mail here. What, um, what should they do? Are there certain lists that are working better now than they were? Is there certain direct mail that's standing out better? Than, than it was before kind of what are you doing specifically? absolutely so so here's what i can share with you it a lot of it this uh mail pieces you know we split test and there's some differences but the real the real needle mover on on really any marketing channel that requires a list whether you're cold calling it or whatever you're doing it facebook audience alike audiences yep. um it's it all comes down to the list mm -hmm. um generally when it comes to lists the list that you get directly from the county city township or municipality are the best Yep. Um, because you're pulling them before anybody, um, especially if you're just getting started and you don't know how to beat a big guy. Like if you come into my market and you're like, how am I going to beat this guy? Well, I can tell you when you're wealthy, you get fat and lazy, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not willing to do the stuff that you were willing to do when you were in the trenches, right? So um, the way you can beat new wholesalers, the, the experienced wholesalers is go and go to the counties, go to the township, the municipality, the city and pull those lists. I can tell you some lists that are working right now that are phenomenal lists <laughs> that are like so good. So first of all, a list that we discovered um, just uh, about a year or two ago, maybe it was now, um, was what we call the 24-hour arrest record list. <laughs> uh, this list is so good. These are people who have just recently been incarcerated. So uh, what we do is we have somebody pull that list uh, from the county. This list is hard to get. It's sometimes it's online, uh, sometimes it's not. But um, you've got to find a way to get it. It's all over the place. Mm. Um, there's not one methodology to find it. But you go and get the 24-hour arrest record list. You find out the address of the person who's been arrested, and then you find out who is the owner of that home. Sometimes mm. it is the person. Uh, more times than not, we're finding that it's not. Yeah. But um, and then you you contact that person either whatever your marketing channel is, cold calling, direct mail whatever but the 24-hour arrest record list use common sense especially you know don't just go door knocking especially with violent i know it's funny but you know violent offenders you don't oh, want to yeah. go yeah so but use common sense and go and do some it is a great 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 list mm. uh and it the what's so good about about it is it's the recency of the list so you're getting people that nobody has really got to their territory uh yet which is really really key mm. um so a uh, 24 hour rest record list is great. The other one that is really great is the water turnoff list. This is another mm. list that's really hard to get. Yeah. Um, but people who've recently had their water turned off in their county, 
amazing list. That's like they're raising their hand. They're saying, hey, I have a problem with this property. I need to get rid of it. Mm. Yep. Uh, that's a really good list for us right now. The other one is um, the garage sale list. This has been good for a long time. It's still really good. What happens with the garage sale list is you just scrape the list every day from Craigslist or wherever you're finding these leads, um, where you know the newspaper, whatever it is. You scrape them every day, the address of the property that's having the garage sale, and then you find the owner and you send your marketing. Um, what is so key about this list is that it's very, very small. So a lot of people draw this list too prematurely because what they're worried about is they'll say, well, I've been doing it for four months and I haven't gotten a deal, but you've only sent out like 85 letters, right? Because it's such a small list. So be cognizant of the fact that the garage sale list is small, but effective. It's like a little ninja that yeah. nobody else gets in there. Um, so, so, so those are really three very hot lists is 24 hour rust record, water turnoff and, um, garage sale lists. Um, the other lists that we find that are, are, are really good are lists that we call, um, and what I, what I would do is I would preface this list by saying that a, a lot of times the list is really inconsequential. It's the fact of how often have these been people, the, all we need is wholesalers is people who have equity, right? So that just yeah. means that the house, they owe less money than what we want to pay. Mm -hmm. And so the, the real, like, you know, are these motivated lists or not is, is difficult to say because the numbers are so small, but one of the little tricks with all lists are have these homeowners been contacted before. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we found is unknown equity, unknown sale date. What's so uh -huh. great about those lists is, and those are, uh, that's for me personally, that is actually my number one list is unknown equity. Um, what's so good about those lists is that whenever most real estate investors, agents, brokers, wholesalers, whatever, when they're pulling lists, one of the very first pieces of criteria is equity. Mm. So what we did is we just removed it. I, and I have to give credit, I think, to Alex Youngblood, who taught me this. It was either Alex Youngblood or Todd Toback, my brother. I don't remember. Fantastic list. Huge ROI on that list. These are homeowners who are getting a postcard usually for the first time or a letter or a phone call uh, or a text or whatever you're doing. And um, it, it works really, really well. Same thing with unknown sale date because typically – most investors, they will put the sale date of the property um, as well. So those are gotcha. two really good lists. Um, another list that's really good, that's always consistently good for us, just consistently all the time is good, is the tax delinquent list. Mm. Um, I'm sure your audience has heard this before. The tax delinquent list is a game changer. It uh, absolutely, um, it's the minute we learned about it, we started doing it. It's two years or more behind in taxes. Okay. Those are people who, who want to sell quickly at a discount. Once in a while. Yeah, guys. So write write those down. Write those down because <clears throat> like Tom was saying, the list is is the first thing. You need to make sure that you're targeting the right people. Uh the next thing, I've I've got a couple questions for you, Tom. So yeah. When you're sending these direct mail pieces out, or uh we'll focus on direct mail in this case, because like so you can you can contact them anyway. You know, direct mail, text, phone call, show up at the door unless they're the rest record list. <laughs> but <Right>. um <laughs> When, when you're sending direct mail to, to let's say, the, the water shut off versus the garage sale list, are you changing the messaging on the postcard too or is it a standard, hey, we'll buy your house kind of thing that you send the same, the same letter to everybody? We send the same letter to everyone with the exception. So let me deep dive the direct mail piece a little bit. So mm -hmm. uh, we send the same exact mail piece to every single person, no matter what, except one of our best lists is um, the inheritance list. Mm -hmm. We use Lance and Terry from US Lead List. They're awesome. Um, we love them. And uh, honest, good people, they know what they're doing. And um, it's a great list. They actually have a card that they write that we have found tested better. So the only list that we don't use our standard postcards is that. The, the trick with the, with the mail is there are two different types of cards that we send. One of them is, hey, I'm my, my brother, Dan. He's my acquisition manager who says, hey, I'm Dan, the local friendly investor. It's kind of positioned as the local home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a corporate card. The other card that we do use occasionally is a corporate card. We use that on every third mailing. Mm. Um, the corporate card is like the the glossy card. It's the first card is kind of like a, a cheap, really handwritten. It looks cheap. It's Dan, the friendly local investor. Mm -hmm. Second one is the shiny, glossy Dan, the corporate polo guy. Um, we find a big difference in the avatar, the homeowner who who will contact us mm. um, off of those cards. So. Um, 
And the other secret with direct mail is you must, must, but two things. First of all, you and I would stink at it because uh, we're not, we're entrepreneurial, right? So visionaries, entrepreneurial people, there's no way that you can make sure that 5,000 pieces drop every single week. It's yep. impossible. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, that's not, you're not good at that. Mm -hmm. um, so number one is outsource your marketing immediately to like a VA. Understand they're going to make some mistakes at first. Just be okay with it. They're going to put the wrong phone number on the wrong card, whatever. Um, outsource it so that every single week it drops. And then we have an, uh, we have an eight week cycle. So uh, I'm sorry, it's a 16 week cycle. And every single 16 weeks, it just repeats. Hmm. And what's important about that is whether or not we're busy with deals, or it's the holidays, by the way, here's a little secret, double down on the holidays, everybody takes their foot off the gas on the holidays when it's Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's, Memorial Day, Labor Day, double your mail because everybody else is on vacation and you're yep. there just becoming a millionaire. So, yep. um, but the key is, is have a mail sequence and have it out by done by somebody else. And that'll make your life so much easier. So as you're compiling all these lists, they're dropping. Um, we used to have an 11 week sequence. Now we have a 16 week sequence. Um, you know, we test a lot, so that's maybe a little too long for some people. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. So tell me with that, and I want to kind of break this down for, for people. Then, then I've got a couple more questions on, on the, for you on this. So you got, uh, you're sending, you're sending X amount of pieces per week. So you, that's your number now. And I want people to recognize that if you're newer, maybe your number isn't 5,000 pieces right now, but what, if, if you were to break it down, man, this is a little while ago. This is probably like earlier this year. Maybe I remember seeing a post that you guys made on Facebook uh, mid year, something like that, where it kind of broke your numbers down. And it was saying, Hey, we're going to do more than a million bucks. I might've been last year even dude. I don't remember. Okay. But I remember it showed a bunch of numbers and it showed like from your, from your report, it showed, Hey, here's all of our sources, you know, direct mail, cold calling this specific mailing piece online, SEO, PPC, all that. Um, and it showed the profits, the percentages and all that stuff. Um, I'll dig it up again. Cause I saved it. It was really cool. Okay. What, cur what currently are you seeing on average? You don't have to give me specifics unless you got them in front of you and you want to share. Uh, what are you seeing? How many mailing pieces do you have to send out to get a deal? Um, and then what's your return been in your market? Now, once again, people, if, if you're newer, your return is going to be different. Markets are different. Your ability to close deals are different. All that stuff. Okay. But what are you, what are you guys seeing? Yeah, so it it really, and this is like when we have a new student who comes in, right? This is like the number one question is mm -hmm. they say, of all the lists you recommend, what's the number one list and how many mail pieces do I need to mail in order to guarantee a deal? So, yep. Right, so what I can tell you is there's no answer to this question. So mm -hmm. all I can give you is a, a little experience share. Uh, it tends to change. It, there's so many variables because the best list in Miami might is definitely not the best list in Dallas, San Diego, San Antonio, and New York. Um, so it's based on there's a few uh, variables. Number one, it mm -hmm. is the skill set of the acquisition manager. It's number two is it is the speed of the acquisition manager. Uh, nothing can kill a motivated seller uh, deal. Nothing, right? Because if a person's going to sell cheap, they're going to sell cheap. Yep. The only thing that would make you lose a deal is speed. Mm -hmm. So if you're, and here's the thing, when you're not fast to return calls, we like the voicemail system. So all of our calls come into voicemail and then we return them very quickly. Um, if you're not quick to do that, I will tell you that the deals you're going to lose are the deals. Mm. You know, you, 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 the people who are not interested, you'll still get them back on the phone. The people who were hot, they're already gone. Yep. Um, so it has to do with that. And also what's really interesting is it has to do with seasonality. Um, for instance, if you live in Green Bay and your mail drops during a 24-inch snowstorm, mm. completely different. And, you know, there's that's true for Florida. We have snowbird season. And, you know, in this territory, they have that. And in that territory, they have that. So um, I think that it's, it's a little difficult to say, here's what yep. I can tell you. The, when it comes to marketing, there's there's a few rules that we have to follow. Number one rule is uh, consistency, mm. right? You, you have to be consistent with your mail. Number two is it's volume, right? So bigger is better. Uh, most people don't want to sell and most people don't want to sell at your low ball price. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I can tell you that, you know, uh, there's a, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are not consistent or they're not mailing enough. Um, if you're not sure how much to mail, 
mail more. And if you're still not sure, then double it again and then double it again. And there's really not as a such thing as too much. <laughs> That's not a hundred percent true, but just, just know if you're not sure if you're mailing enough, you're not mailing enough that I can guarantee you. Um, as far as like a conversion ROI in general, and I am going to get definitely stung on this, but I'll do oh, it yeah, for, for Trevor. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to definitely get my feet held to the fire on this on a support call next week. I guarantee it. Yeah. You could somewhat expect to do a deal if you count a lead as a phone call, no matter what the phone call says, even if it says, stop mailing me and they hang up mm-hmm. or they say, I want to sell. You can kind of make a general statement to say every 40 to 60 phone calls, you'll, you'll get a deal. Yep. You're guaranteed to get a deal, except you're not guaranteed to get a deal, right? But if you said, hey, Tom, I've got to hold you to a number, somewhere in that general ballpark, mm-hmm. you should be able to be guaranteed a deal between 40 and 60 without any guarantee. But if that, you know, if you want to put that under your pillow and sleep on it, right? If you're listening and you're like, well, what's the number one secret? So if you can figure out your response rate, let's just say that your response rate on direct mail is one and a half percent, you could kind of reverse engineer it um, from there. And of course, this is not the same for everybody. Um, Mm -hmm. That number could be much less, or if you're brand new, that number could be twice as much. Yep. Um, you know, so that's kind of like a general, um, really super general number. Yeah, no, and, and, that's, <laughs> and that's perfect, man, because I think, I think it helps add a lot of context, you know, where especially when you're looking at the numbers, I always talk about remove, remove the emotion and, and focus on the math. And, and that's, what, that's what we're doing here. Because if you, if you have average response rates, which once again, they're going to they're gonna change depending on the market depending on the piece, depending on the list, all that. And then if you have what I, I call the lead to close ratio, and like Tom said, if you're counting it for a phone call or whatever it is, you, you have to determine what's a lead. Um, but for us, a lead would be an opt-in on a website or, or a phone call from your website. Um, then you have those numbers. And I think then that way people obviously don't get discouraged. If they're like, man, I'm 20 phone calls in and the people don't know. It's like, you're halfway there. You're a third of the way there, whatever it is. Exactly. So, um, well, and I think the key is I learned this early. Um, you know, we used to like make gut check decisions. And mm-hmm. I learned this from Mark Evans was data, not drama. I went to yep. lunch with him. He pulled up in a Rolex. I'm like, whatever he says, I'm going to write down and listen to. This yep. was years ago. And he told me about data, not drama, which is key. And I also think that, you know, you bring up a good point about this is that you're, you know, it may seem like a lot, but you're halfway there. Let me give you a, a little more detail on that, which is if you live uh, in some markets like Cincinnati, you are going to have a much more, many more deals at a much lower price. Typically, this is just a typical, but if you live in San Diego, you are going to have far fewer deals that are going to be way bigger. Yep. So an $80,000 assignment in San Diego, totally doable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a $3,000 assignment in Cincinnati, totally doable. Um, so you have to also kind of take what we're saying and then we have, you have to kind of make it fit into wherever you live in the country, Mm -hmm. uh, based on the price point of the home compared on a national average. So that's also, you know. I love it. And, and it also depends on the lead source, right? And I want to talk about your marketing mix here in a second. And before I do, actually, uh, y'all, one, one thing that we uh, have mentioned here on this call, uh, not overtly, but a few times, is Tom works with a ton of people who are beginning to be wholesalers, helps get the first deal in. And now, because so many are successful, helps scale the business up and has amazing people. He works with Cody Hoffine and Brent Daniels and I love it. And so kind of where, where I was going with it was every type of lead source is going to have a different lead to close ratio. Your direct mail is going to be like Tom said, between the 40 and 60. And that's what we've seen uh, as well and heard from other, other people. Your, your cold calling is going to have its own. Your text messages are going to have its own. Um, your online is going to have its own SEO, uh, you know, search engine optimization. Like Tom said, it's, they're a lot hotter because they're, they're activated and they're seeking you out. So you're one sure. in, one in eight to one in 15, maybe one in eight to one in 20 PPCs, one in 10 to one in 20 around there. But at the same time, you get your volume from your outbound and you get the highly crazy motivated from the inbound. And so well, the reason I want to bring both those up is what is your marketing stack now? Cause we know that you started with direct mail. You've still been pounding the direct mail uh, drum. It still works. I want people to make sure that they know that it works when you're following the right people that are not giving up on it, but they're always testing, which Tom and his team is. Um, but what does your marketing stack look like today uh, where you're fielding leads in from? 
Sure. So, so we have, uh, because I have wholesaling Inc, which is a coaching business. Mm -hmm. I use my, my home wholesaling business as kind of like a testing ground. So sometimes it's like a a once and done. So for instance, Mm -hmm. uh, Brent Daniels came in, you know, he said, Hey, TTP, we want to, you know, introduce it to the whole tribe. I was like, great, let me try it. He said, sure. He did it. We made a tremendous fortune in in six Mm -hmm. weeks. I said, do it. But um, it was kind of like a start and stop. So our consistent ongoing day to day is going to be um it's going to be um direct mail it's going to be our website our carrot website it's going to be uh ppc um it's going to be uh we do facebook advertising Mm -hmm. and we do um we don't really have cold calling anymore um a lot of the programs that we see in wholesaling inc they were we they were trials that we did um that's that's really the majority of it we have chris arnold coming in uh actually this started today too He's he's working with my people to do radio ads, so I'm really cool. excited about that. Chris Arnold is the best in the business for radio ads for wholesalers. Mm. So uh, we have him coming in, um, but yeah, that's essentially um, we, we've done. We've also tested some other things, uh, sticky notes on door, which works works really well. When we decided to, we met uh, David Letko from Deal Machine. He has an awesome product for driving for dollars. We tested that; works really really well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so so we have um, amazing people that we've gone through to test stuff, but uh, the the day in and day out channels are really our direct mail is. I could lose some of my channels, but direct mail, you know, SEO and the website, those are those are like my consistent foundation, and then like the hot lead that just comes in all the time yep. uh, from the website. The other thing that's important with Carrot and us is that your stuff works with our stuff, so we're promoting mm-hmm. our website on the direct mail. So what's happening is like it's this beautiful circle where a lot of times that when someone gets our direct mail, they are very, and people don't realize this, but a lot of times when someone's a motivated seller, they kind of keep things very close to the chest. Mm. Um, so we have like a mail piece, for instance, that says that like, Hey, no one will pick up the line. Just listen to our recorded message. But we find a lot of those people who are really motivated, they go directly to the website. Yeah. Um, so it kind of works in unison. So I almost look at it as one channel, but that's really our bread and butter. Um, that combination is, is our strength. I, I love it. And that's, that's important guys. Cause like, like Tom said, and, and I'll kind of wrap the marketing part with this. And then I want to drive you guys to uh, actually to, to work with Tom and his team. So uh, I want to wrap the marketing part with this and, and let's bring the whole thing full circle. Number one, y'all make that mindset shift. Like Tom said that he made when he was 33. And if, if there are some things about you right now that you're looking at other people could be Tom or someone else and go, man, he can do that because he is blah. Guys, you guys can make the same shift. Write down who you are now, what things you don't like about yourself. Not physical, I'm talking like your, your habits, your, your mindsets. Write those down and then write down why you don't like those. And then write down who you want to become or need to become to really achieve and be the person you are. And then, and then start to be around those people like Tom said. That was a big lesson he talked about. Be around those people. Number two, go all in on one marketing method and go all in and working with a coach. Uh, I can tell you when things started to go, go amazing for me, y'all, is when I got coaches. And when things got hard, uh, three, four years ago in Carrot, uh, was the first thing I did. I hired a coach. And that coach cost me 2500 bucks a month for a year and a half. Um, the next thing when, when I started up level and go, man, it works so well getting a coach. Um, now I'm going to find a coach for the next thing. And so I go out there and find the best possible coach that I could find in the software world. And, um, we're good buds. Now we, we, uh, we, we, we talk a lot. We go, I've been in his coaching program for over a year and a half, five grand a month. So over $60,000 a year, I'm paying him to be a coach. And so I fully believe in coaching and it's something that, I think it was two years ago, we said, who's the best wholesale coach that we know that's consistently producing results that we have a shared core value set. And um, you always see like lots of things online where you go, man, like, is, is that real that what that person is posting? And over and over again, because I saw the data behind the scenes on the carrot side, I had an advantage where I would see a customer that I knew was our customer that posted something that said they worked with Tom. I'm like, wow. okay. Yeah, I'm going to go look at the data. I'm going to go look at some stuff on this side, and then I'm going to reach out to them. And so it happened enough to where I got enough good thumbs up from people to go, yes, the thing worked really well, and their program was great. That We brought them in as our wholesaling coach in our marketplace, um, where you guys can go to uh, carrot.com forward slash wholesaling coach. It'll work either way if you put in wholesaling or the word 
uh, wholesaling dash coach or wholesaling coach all in one word, but carrots.com wholesaling coach, carrot.com wholesaling coach. Uh, you're going to be able to see Tom and his uh, company wholesaling Inc over there and a bunch of testimonies from carrot customers, which is like a hundredth of probably the actual number of them. And uh, our aim y'all, I and mean, I'm just going to tell you guys our full uh, reason for doing this is we know that someone will not continue to be a carrot member unless they're successful in actually closing deals. And we don't teach you the deal closing side of it. We teach you the online marketing side. We teach you some mindset stuff. Uh, but we have to then pair up with people who can teach you the deal closing side of it and, and everything around that that part of it, the craft of wholesaling. Uh, so go to carrot.com forward slash wholesaling coach. Um, the next thing I'll wrap up and I'm going to toss it over to you, Tom, is um, Tom talked about going all in on one method, going all in, all in with the coach, which I 100% agree with. And then, then after that, once you get amazing at something, it's packaged up, then you can stack things on. Uh, Tom started stacking on Facebook and PPC and Carrot uh, after he, he started getting really good at, at direct mail. Brian Rockwell, on the other hand, he started the opposite. He's like, this is what comes natural to me. I'm going to go all in online. He did 650K his first year, 100% online with Carrot. And now Whoa. stacking on direct mail. Like, so it, it, they both work. Just go all in on one of them. Okay, go all in on one of them. But Tom, I want to toss it over to you, man. So how, how do you guys work with students? Um, what, what's the experience look like? Um, and anything else you want to talk about as far as on the coaching side? Because I want people to have success with Carrot. And the only way they can do that is if they're closing deals. So we teach exactly how I learned. And you've got to be, this is not the right methodology for everybody. Um, if you want to just come in and cherry pick our postcard and our list, it's not a good program for you. Yep. We are Mr. Miyagi Daniel's son. So we are going to tell you what to do. You're going to run it by your real estate attorney, make sure that it's good and wholesome. And, and legal and then you're going to go and do it and that's our relationship we are very much instruction I, I think that the big mistake that a lot of people make is they education is preparation so they put it first but we take the education out and put it at the end of the equation mm. in our methodology it's instruction equals action equals results equals education. Your education comes from taking massive imperfect action from getting out of your own way. And you know, we're like, Hey, you've come this far, come a little bit further, do what we let us disappoint you. That's what we want to do. We want to, we want you to be done with this and say, this was the greatest thing ever, or Tom totally failed me, but you've got to be vulnerable and submit to the training and take the instruction. I know it sounds like a lot that we're asking, but that's how it worked for me. If yep. I can stand here today and, and tell you I'm a multimillionaire because I listened to my brother. I got out of my own way. The things that I were doing, that I was doing, it wasn't working. So yep. I kept trying to do it myself and I kept trying, I, I was just putting all of the instruction through the filter of my own opinion. But <clears throat> that doesn't work for everybody. So, it, But if you're ready to kind of get out of your own way and do that, that's what we do. It's instruction over education. We tell you what to do. You do it. You get the result and you learn. And the first time you do it, it's going to stink. It's going to be rough and you're going to get uncomfortable, but you got to seek discomfort mm. every day. I mean, look at wealthy people. What do they do? They seek discomfort every day. They're willing to have the awkward conversation. They're, they're willing to not care what people think of them and what they look like. Um, you know, they're willing to look foolish. So if you can, if you could do that, um, it's it's really a great adventure, and it's a lot of fun if you have the right perspective. But um, that's kind of how I learned. Um, that's how I do it. I do it exactly how I learned it from Todd. Is just here's the instruction: go out and do it, get some results, and get right back up and do it again, and get right back up and do it again. Um, <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's a unique thing. And I, I, I just Trevor, you know, you said before, you know, you said something. It's it's really liquid gold, and I just don't want to gloss over this you know you guys when trevor was talking he said write it down right write down who you want to be i am telling you a written goal i wish i could turn this camera i can't <laughs> but i always have a big goal a big one and i am telling you i always hit my goal even if i don't hit it hmm. because my life will change in such a significant way we have goals that we put up when we first put good they were so tiny but now they're massive goals and i can tell you Everyone who says that a written goal, that writing goal doesn't work, not writing goals. But if you listen to, you know, Trevor or Joe Rogan or um, whoever you like, you pick the guy, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Eric Thomas, write it down. If it's not, one thing that we live and die by in this company, if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. Yep. And if you write down a goal and you really just focus all of you, all of your time, energy, money, 
focus, attention, all of it focused into one area, you guys could do amazing things. You would be blown away by how powerful you actually can, you are when you're just focused on one point. But when you're like distracted and you don't have a written goal, it's, it really works against you. So I just wanted to go over that because you said that and Trevor, I mean, it's such a common thread amongst all successful people is they just have a written goal and it sounds so easy, but like nobody does it. Just do it. <laughs> write down a goal tonight, right now. If that's the only thing you do on this podcast is write a goal. It will change your life. I'm telling you. I love it. I love it, man. One, one, one last question. Uh, and that's amazing. I, I, one last question. So um, I, I know you guys specialize in helping people get their first deals done. Um, and I can't remember you, you guys were, you guys were launching a program or did you launch a program for people looking to scale their business up too, correct? What's what, who, who you're primarily focused on, who should go to carrot.com forward slash wholesaling, wholesaling coach. Yeah. So, so if you, our, the majority of the people who come to us are, they have not done their first deal or they want to get some consistency in doing deals. Cool. We have a program called scale where you, you go out to see Cody um, and you can go out every three months and he has a business where he's on track. It looks like he's going to do actually 2 million mm. uh, this year in Salt Lake city. And um, he's, um, he's a real estate investor wholesaler out there. So you go to him and he teaches you about delegation. Cool. Um, my business is delegated, but it's not very sexy. Like it's one and a half people. And this is my whole office. It's in my house. I don't really, you know, everyone's like, I want to come and see you. I'm like, there's, not, this, this is, uh, there's my Murphy bed in the background. Like there's yeah. not much to see. Right. But, um, but Cody has like the whole office with the high energy and people cold calling and going cool. out to appointments. Um, but yeah, our, our majority of our students are people who they want to do their first deal. They don't know how to do it. I mean, you could do everything I tell you to do and not get any results, but we feel like we're going to really give you your best chance at getting your first deal. Mm. And we're excited about that. I love it. Guys, go to carrot.com forward slash wholesaling coach uh, to dive in and uh, fill out the info, get on, on a phone call with one of Tom's team and see if it's a fit. But Tom, man, I am so grateful for the friendship. So grateful for just the energy you put into the industry, the world, your students, uh, everyone around you. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud that you're one of my, one of the, the five you know, people are around me, they're influencing me in a good way. So I appreciate your time here. And, and uh, man, big time. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you were able to come back for number two numero dos of, uh, of, of the podcast. For sure. Brother, it's, I'm honored. Thank you for having me. And I know, you know, when it, I'm honored that you would choose us to, you know, be a wholesaling coach for you. So, you know, I know, you know, a lot of people and really it means the world to us. We're honored. And uh, I will, I'm happy to be back on anytime. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a great honor. Thank I you, brother. It, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Guys, go to carrot.com forward slash wholesaling coach or just go to our marketplace. If you're logged into the into the software, just go to uh, the button up top that says marketplace. Go check it out. And uh, Tom and Wholesaling Inc. are the only wholesaling coaches in there. So go check it out. Y'all, we're, we're really tightly integrated with them. Uh, they they teach carrot. They don't really teach carrot on this side, but they refer carrot over and we're in their training and we're very tightly integrated. So no matter what, if you're implementing what they teach, we're going to help amplify that on the carrot side. If we're doing, if you're doing the carrot side, you can amplify that with what they do. So go check it out guys and gals. And we appreciate the heck out of your time. Go give this episode a rating review on Apple iTunes or podcast or whatever it's called now, Apple podcast, uh, Spotify, <laughs> wherever you're doing it. But uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you, Tom, for returning. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Trevor. Have a good day, brother. You too.